3 billion years ago, a new life form appeared on Earth. A life form so toxic, it threatened to destroy all existing life on the planet. This dominant organism has not gone away. It is still here, quietly living among us. This story starts with the first life on our planet, prokaryotic cells, the earliest bacteria. These early anaerobic cells lived in the ocean. Microscopic specks of life, reproducing and spreading across the planet. For a billion years they were the dominant life on Earth. But this dominance was about to be challenged. Somewhere in the vast oceans of our evolving planet, a remarkable mutation occurred. One of these primitive bacteria developed the ability to capture energy directly from the sun. This event may have occurred in a tide pool. Waves bringing a regular supply of nutrients and sunlight penetrating the shallow clear water. This new mutant life form was noticeably different from its ancestor. It was a bright green, and gas bubbled from its cell membrane. A highly reactive and toxic gas, oxygen. This gas threatened and attacked the existing life, destroying it on contact and driving many species to extinction. The survivors of this assault hid in the deepest parts of the oceans and buried themselves in mud flats away from the oxygen threat. Scientists call this early appearance of oxygen the oxygen catastrophe. This new life form creating the oxygen is cyanobacteria. And this new process that captured energy from the sun and released oxygen into the atmosphere is photosynthesis. The cyanobacteria multiplied rapidly, filling the oceans with oxygen. Oxygen is a very reactive gas. Not only did it attack and destroy much of the existing life on the planet, but it started to shape Earth's landscape. The early oceans of the Earth contained suspended iron. You may know what happens when wet iron meets oxygen. Rust appears, iron oxide. Oxygen bubbling from the cyanobacteria combined with the iron in the oceans and for millions of years iron oxide rained down forming huge beds of red rust on the ocean floor. These bands of iron oxide are visible today pushed up by tectonic action and exposed by erosion. This image shows iron oxide bands in the rock. Miners extract iron from these ancient deposits. This man-made mountain represents the tailings from an iron mine, the waste material left over after the iron is extracted. Iron is the main component in steel, and steel is used to construct everything from cars to skyscrapers. Cyanobacteria created these iron deposits. The organism responsible for these dramatic events still lives in the ponds, streams, and oceans of our planet. The green tint in the water in this petri dish comes from the colony of cyanobacteria living here. When exposed to sunlight, they produce oxygen, just as they did three billion years ago. As the world adapted to this new organism and its oxygen, remarkable new life forms started to evolve, adapting to use oxygen to create energy. Evidence of these early oxygen users can be found in the fossil record. The chemistry of this oxygen reaction produced carbon dioxide, an essential component of photosynthesis. The cyanobacteria needed carbon dioxide, along with sunlight and water, to produce oxygen, a perfect relationship between oxygen producers and oxygen consumers. The photosynthesis equation can be written like this. Six molecules of water plus six molecules of carbon dioxide plus light, 
produce one molecule of sugar and six molecules of oxygen. Not only does photosynthesis replenish the air with oxygen, but it also stores energy from the sun as sugar. We, that is us humans, are oxygen consumers, breathing in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. You probably know that plants are responsible for the photosynthesis that cycles our carbon dioxide back into usable oxygen, but you may not know the surprising role that cyanobacteria play in this process. The organelles in a plant's leaves that are responsible for photosynthesis are called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are visible with a microscope. These are leaves from a moss plant. Mounting this leaf sample on a slide with a drop of water and cover slip will allow us to see the chloroplasts in each cell. Under the microscope, you can clearly see the green chloroplasts embedded in the leaves. Researchers noted that these chloroplasts were very similar to cyanobacteria. Here are some cyanobacteria under the microscope. As you can see, they are similar to chloroplasts. Could chloroplasts be related to cyanobacteria? Researchers have answered that question. Using the tools of genetics, they determined that not only are chloroplasts related to cyanobacteria, they actually are cyanobacteria that have adapted to living inside the plant. The explanation is this. Sometime in the distant past, cyanobacteria entered into a relationship with a primitive plant-like organism, eventually becoming a living part of this organism, and in the process creating something new, a plant. This relationship was mutually beneficial. The cyanobacteria, using photosynthesis, created energy for the plant, and the plant allowed the cyanobacteria to leave the sea and move closer to the sun. At the interface between the ocean and land, green plants appeared, clinging to the rocks. Washed by waves, these early plants climbed out of the ocean, carrying their embedded cyanobacteria with them. And over the next billion years, these primitive plants changed, adapted, and evolved into the dramatic diversity of plant life that we now have on our planet. The grass in your lawn, the trees in the park, the green landscape all around us is populated with cyanobacteria, embedded in the leaves of plants, quietly producing oxygen. Without them, we could not exist. This is a remarkable revelation that two separate organisms could become one. Endosymbiosis is the name scientists give to this process where one living thing becomes incorporated into another. It is an exciting way to think about evolution, new species being created by cooperation and assimilation. If you are interested in studying life on Earth, there are unlimited opportunities to contribute to our knowledge about the evolving life on our planet. Much remains to be discovered. For more science-related videos and activities, visit our website, hyloroad.com.